first get it, you're learning about groups. I, I, just, I thought I thought that too. So I remember thinking that. So that shouldn't be g equals d8, that should be g equals d3. I'm going to let you do this one for homework. Try g equals uh, d3 and um, find the left and right cosets with a equals r2. And h equals the rota cyclic group of rotations, uh, cyclic group of reflections, the second reflection through the second vertex. Uh, is that also going to be on the yeah, this one should be a quick one, but you can just cross-check with your partners um, whether you have the same thing. So this should be G equals D3, not Z8. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to take more class time. I think you guys got the hang of calculating this. And in this case, it's not an abelian group, which is why I chose this. So same question. Are the left and the right cosets going to be the same? So it's a wrinkle, right? Because it's not, it's not an abelian group. So test it out. You know, this is a quick one. You don't even need a Skype for this one. You can text each other and go, did you get, abelian, did you get them to be the same or not? Okay, um, I like to label my theorems. Did you get it down? I like to label my theorems instead of one of the dry things about books is they label it with numbers. But for me, I need to name the important ones. So this is the theorem that tells you that cosets partition G just like mod 2 partition Z. And it was actually Frehley's picture where I first understood the importance of the cosets because he draws it pictorially and you see that you're really taking the original group and breaking it up into pieces and these pieces are breaking it up exactly the way mod 2 breaks up z. It's the same thing. So if you have a g is a finite group and h is a subgroup of g, um, then if a and b are in g, a h and equals either b h and a h are the same, like you have a duplicate coset, or they're completely disjoint. So that's the same as 0 and 1, the box 0 and the box 1. Either there's two elements in there that are exactly the same, or they're in completely separate sets. What is the third word after G, B? I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes the tablet freaks out. Any. I think it's any group, yeah. Okay. Something happened. My daughter walked in again. <laughs> Oh, finite group, there it is. Isn't that true for infinite groups too? All of this stuff? Maybe you should think about that. <laughs> Chris, Kristen, just assign yourself another, another homework problem. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a good question, actually. It would be a good question on a test. <laughs> And second, the group can be written as a disjoint union of left cosets. Exactly the same, like in, in my mind, I always have to think of some example to fall back on. Z2 is that, that thing, right? Zero and one, the two boxes, if you union them, they give you all of Z back. Right? Zero and one, the boxes are disjoint. Nothing in the zero box is in the one box, and nothing in the one box is in the zero box. And this union of them both total up to be all of Z. So this one I do want you to try out here. You already did G equals Z at 16. You got your test back. Um, write it as a union of disjoint cosets with H equals the sub, uh, subgroup, cyclic subgroup 4. And take S3 also and try it out with S3, which is D D3. It's the same thing. And write D3 as a disjoint union of cosets with H equals 
213, and I forgot which one that was, was back on the list. You see, one goes to two, two goes to one, and three goes to, it's a reflection, right? Right. And this, if you finish, will be amazing because we have only five more minutes left. <laughs> I think you should, though. It's not, it's not too bad. Once you start going, you'll see. So when you write this out, well, Z16 is equal to, and put blah, union, blah, union, blah, and put them all in. <laughs> 